You've seen one type of object used with the item's attribute and a for each tag, but there are some other types of things that can go in there. Each one of them can return a list that can be used by for each to create the loop. Any of the classes that implement the collection interface can be used. This interface requires the implementation of an iterator method that returns an iterator object. This iterator object then can be used inside the loop to produce the individual items each time through the loop. The map object is the one that was used in the previous example. It returns a collection of entry objects, each of which contains a key and a value. Any class that implements the iterator interface has a method that can be used to repeatedly return the objects it contains one at a time. Any class that implements the enumeration interface also has a method that can be used to repeatedly return individual objects. An array of objects can be used. The for each tag uses an index counter to subscript its way through the array, and one object is available to each iteration of the loop. Actually, any array will work. It doesn't have to contain objects. It can hold any value type in Java. You can use a string of comma delimited items. The for each tag will split them apart and iterate once through the loop for each member of the list. You can even use the result objects required from a database query. If the result you get back contains more than one returned value, the for each tag will execute the loop once for each of those values. Let me show you an example of using three of these different types. I'll start with a Java code that generates the list. Now to keep this as clear as possible, I have one class that produces the same list in three different forms. Each of the three lists will contain the same four string objects. Each string object is simply the name of a color. Now here is the first method to return a list. Notice how its name is formed. It begins with the word get. That's true of all the methods that return things in the syntax used in the for each loop. This one just returns a single string that's made up of all the names in the list separated by commas. This method returns the strings in the array. That's easy to do because that's the way they're declared in this class. This last method returns an enumeration object, which will return a different name with each call to the method named next element. This is done by defining an inner class that has access to the inner list of names. Whenever an object of this class is created, its index is initialized to zero. The hasMoreElements method simply tests the value of the index with the number of members in the array. If the index hasn't gone beyond the end of the array, there are still some members in it left. This method returns one element of the array and bumps the index to the next member. It only does this as long as there is at least one member left. Remember, the getElist method returns an instance of the inner enumeration class. It will return a new instance of it every time you call it. Now here's the JSP page that uses this bean. At the top of the page, the local name lmaker is assigned to represent the class com.vtc.listmaker. This web page contains three for each loops. The first loop causes a listmaker object to be constructed and uses that object to retrieve a comma separated list of names. The for each loop executes once for each name in the list and displays each name on its own line. In the second loop, a call is made to get array to return an array of string objects containing the names. The rest of the code of the loop is exactly the same as it was before. It just displays the list of names one name at a time. And here is the third example. The getElist method is called to return an enumeration object. 
The rest of the loop is exactly the same as the others. Now internally, the methods of the enumeration data type are called to cause the loop to execute once for each member of the enumeration object. And here's the final page. You can see that they're all three exactly the same. The code in the tag determines what kind of list it has and what it needs to do to extract the individual elements from that list.